it's so good to see you. Great to see you, Ellen. It's been a while, and uh, happy holidays to you. And did you spend it? I know you live uh, in here part time in Spain part time. Were you in Spain for the holidays? No, we were here in LA. Yeah. Because uh, my brother lives here, and we're very close. I'm 11 years young, uh, older than him, and he has a little baby. Um, I had met him, but my kids still had not met. Uh, their cousin, and they were very angry and upset about that. And finally, we could be here together with them. Oh, that's sweet. That's great. Are there specific traditions that you have coming from Spain, and do you do them here? Well, you know that we eat uh, 12 grapes for New Year's evening in the last 12 seconds. In 12 seconds, you have to eat 12 grapes? Yeah, and normally they give you grapes that are this big, so I'm always like looking at everyone and nobody's choking. And this is the first time that I go to a place and my own brother didn't have the grapes prepared. So for Javier and I, that was like the end of the world. How can, are we going to do this ritual without the grapes? And what is that supposed to mean? Is it, is it, what's that do when you eat the 12 it, grapes? I, I think, you know, we've done it for so long. That is, um, uh, some people say you ask for one wish for each grape. Um, for others, it's more a superstition thing. For me, it's just a, this beautiful ritual with my family since I was a little girl. But I have to say, since I have little children, it has become such a stressful moment. <laughs> I'm looking at them like, are they still breathing? <laughs> right, right. Yeah, to shove 12 grapes yeah. in your mouth. I, I used to cut them, like give them a quarter of the grape. They don't want that. They want the whole thing. So. Well, the, the most important thing is that you were with your family and your loved ones, and we're all grateful and we're healthy, healthy and happy and stuff like that. Yes, um, you have been here many times. Your first time here was season one, season two. And uh, so this is what you were teaching me. Do you remember this moment where you were teaching me a dance that you did in a movie? Ah, oh my God, yes, I remember. <laughs> and you did it too. Great. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a lot of commitment. I love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, Selma Hayek was here, your, your good friend Selma. And uh, she, well, first we were Zooming with her, and the owl, actually, I wanted to meet it, and the owl showed up with lunch in its claws. And yeah. then we were talking about it here. Have you met the owl? Yes, of course. Do you like the owl? I love the owl because when she told me that she had one, I was blown away because when I was little, my grandmother had a neighbor who had an owl, and, and I was really scared of the owl, but I always wanted to go and see her. And then Salma has one at home, and, and she invites us to feed the owl with these little rats and give it to my daughter to give the rat to the owl, which yeah. is a little traumatic for her. But... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not the way to... But, How old is your daughter? Eight. And... No, no, but... but... She knows she was... the other animal has to eat too, but the right. first day was, you know, she was very impressed yeah. by that. I love owls though, and I think that's so cool. I keep telling her she needs to get a second one because it needs a pal. I agree with yeah. you, but it's so cute that animal yeah. that she has there. And, and also, did you know that her house was haunted? She didn't tell me that. We've been in that house, and I believe it. If she says that it's haunted, I believe yeah. her. You wouldn't be scared of that. You would like that, right? <laughs> If, if she sees this interview, she's going to laugh because, the, you know, when I got to L.A. the first time, we didn't know each other, only on the phone. And I got here with a ticket to make a movie. I had my return ticket, so I was coming here for two months, and I didn't know anyone here. And she picked me up at the airport, and she said, you're not going to the hotel. You're coming to my house because this is hard at the beginning, and you're going to feel very lonely. So she took me to her house. That's why now we're like sisters. And... And I ended up also sleeping in her room because I was scared. And, you know, that's the way we, we met. And on top of that, in the middle of the night, she says that I was holding her hand because, because I was afraid. I don't know. I was dreaming. I don't know. So I, she would laugh so much if she hears you say that because our, our beginning was really particular. <laughs> that's really sweet, though. And that's great that she took you in and that she knew that it, it was, was going to be hard. It was amazing, you know, that somebody that I really didn't know only on the phone, yeah. she made sure that she picked me up at the airport and she didn't let me go to the hotel. She, she told me, you are, whether you want it or not, you're, you don't know me, but you're coming to my house. I'm not going to leave you alone that's in the hotel. So I sweet. love her so much. But, you know, from day one, she's been like that with me. Yeah, no, she's, well, she's fantastic. I love her. I adore her. Should we take a break and we'll talk about the movie after this? Well, sure. 
All right, we'll take a break. More with Penelope after this. We are back with Penelope Cruz. And uh, so Parallel Mothers, tell everybody about uh, what, what the film is about. Beautiful, by the way. Ah, oh, thank you. I love this film. And I, there is not a lot that I can share about what happens in this story. But uh, two women, uh, we meet at a hospital on the same day that we're going to give birth. And something happens in that day that is going to make uh, our destinies like, um, be stuck together forever. But it's really, really interesting the way it's written. Pedro is a total genius. Yeah. And I, I love making this film so much. It's really it's, special. It's fantastic. Me. And you seem to enjoy playing pregnant. Is that something you look for in a film? <laughs> well, I have a very strong maternal instinct. And Pedro and I know each other since I was 17. And he always saw that in me. So every one of the movies that I've done with him, I was either pregnant or I was a mother or I was giving birth in a bus, like my first movie with him. I was 10 minutes of the movie giving birth in a bus. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So you enjoy doing that? I love it, you know? I mean, being a mom is the best thing in the world. But, but he, he, always, <laughs> he always saw that in me. Yeah. Because like, everywhere we go, any kid that I see, I, I, I go and I start talking to them. And he was always like, stop doing that. They don't know you. Leave the kid alone. But I can't. I don't think the kid minds when you do that. <laughs> um, all right, and let's talk about the, your other movie that's out right now, because Jessica was here, Chastain, and recently. Um, the 355, great cast, and completely different kind of film. So you go from that film to this, this wild action film that you didn't have to do too much action in. Yeah, because when, when Jessica and Simon, uh, the director, called me to be a part of this, they didn't even have a script. It was an idea. and. They, they asked me, what do you imagine doing in a world of spies? What kind of character would you like to play? And I told them, actually, I would love to play the fish out of water. I don't see that so much in this, in this genre. In, in this movie, which, by the way, is five female leads, the ones that are saving the world, <laughs> eh, every, everyone is really smart, everyone is really good at many things, but not good at everything. And my character is a psychologist, and she doesn't want to be an agent in the field. And she's a mother, and she works in her city with her family. But something happens, and she's forced to be in that mission. And she's forced to be traveling with them and risking her life. And it's interesting also to see one of the group being the mother and showing the conflict of right. that kind of lifestyle and danger combined to like calling the husband and saying, make sure she doesn't get any dairy, like things like that. Right, that, right. That we kind of improvise, improvised. A well, it's, it's a great cast. I mean, it, it's you and Jessica and um, Lupita. Lupita and Diane. And, anyway, and it's great. Baby.